Hi guys, this is Pat Shahani and thank you so much for so much love and support for the previous video. If you haven't checked it out, then please check it out. The link will be uh, in the description below and uh, uh, thank you so much once again for so much love and support. So I am here with a new video on uh, bronchial asthma, the drugs correlated with pathophysiology because I think that correlation is basically very important in medicine. Uh, it will help us to know the step by step uh, of the disease progression and we can know the drugs at which step they are acting so which will help us to not just treat the symptoms but also treat the etiology uh, which is very important we are not just supposed to treat the condition we are supposed to treat the patients so and before starting the video it is a serious warning that uh, this is a video just for educational purposes you are not supposed to buy drugs from the med store and try it on patients okay uh, so serious warning to you all guys uh, and uh, okay let's start with the video uh, so this is the video okay sorry for the inconvenience okay yeah so uh, this all is the pathophysiology in a flowchart format and first of all we are going to discuss the pathophysiology and then we are going to discuss the drugs acting as individual individual steps okay uh, so let's start with the video first of all there is allergen exposure okay then uh, allergen enters into the respiratory tract okay via inhalation in the respiratory tract they reach the bronchi uh, there is uh, there are macrophages present in the respiratory tract they are basically antigen presenting cells okay uh, apcs they are abbreviated as uh, so first of all the allergen is ingested by the macrophages they take up the allergen, phagocytosate and express it to the lymphocytes, okay? The lymphocytes that are exposed, uh, they are present in the local lymph nodes. So ma macrophages, they enter into the lymph tract, they reach the local lymph node, they activate the T helper 2 cells, okay? Uh, this T helper 2 cells does the following functions, okay? First of all, it releases some interleukins and uh, these interleukins, they help in, they uh, play a great role in this uh, bronchial asthma, okay? First interleukin which is released is not the first chronological order, but we are discussing it. Interleukin 5 is released. Interleukin 5 released binds to interleukin 5 receptor and ultimately this will recruit the eosinophils and the basophils, okay? eosinophils and the basophils remember this point it is asked many times in the mcqs that which interleukin is responsible for the recruitment of eosinophils so it is interleukin 5 okay then next interleukins released are interleukin 4 and interleukin 13 they bind to their respective receptors these both these all the interleukins they ultimately promote the inflammation inflammation is basically a response by a vascular connective tissue to a stimulus uh, and it is usually protective but it is sometimes dangerous for example in this bronchial asthma case it is responsible for precipitation of the attack and uh, okay then next thing uh, these interleukins some interleukins are released which leads to activation of the B cells to the plasma cells these B cells to the plasma cells activation is mediated by the interleukins okay so interleukins they uh, take part in the conversion of b cells to the activated plasma cells these plasma cells they are responsible for formation of antibodies the antibodies formed here are ige antibodies these ige antibodies what they do they bind to a cell which has got receptor for fc portion of the ige we know the basic structure of antibodies it has got fc region down okay the y shape structure the fc region so uh, it binds to the FC receptor for uh, IgE. This FC receptor is present on a specialized cells known as mast cells. They are basically derived from the B cells. So these mast cells, we are diving deep into the mast cell okay, right now. Uh, binding of the antibody to the uh, receptor will lead to activation of the mast cell DNA. This mast cell DNA upon activation will lead to acetylation of histone protein H3. This acetylation of histone protein H3 is responsible for the increased production of phospholipase A2. Now phospholipase A2 is an uh, enzyme which is responsible, which has got a great role in the prostaglandin and leukotriene pathway. So here increased phospholipase A2 will lead to increased lipoxygenase. Increased lipoxygenase 
will ultimately lead to increased formation of leukotrienes. Now these leukotrienes, they are not released on the first exposure to the allergen. They are stored as inflammatory substances into the mast cells. These dot 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 things shown in this diagram, they are the leukotrienes uh, as granules. Okay, so in this mast cell, now the IgE antibody uh, it binds to the total surface of the mast cell, okay, as shown in this diagram, okay. Uh, this mast cell is known as IgE coated mast cells with stored leukotrienes inside it. Now the problem arises, the first uh, exposure has got no major problem, it has got a bit of inflammation, but the problem arises on the re-exposure with the same allergen. Uh, upon re-exposure with the same allergen, binding of IgE, okay, what happens is, the same allergen, it has got antibodies prepared against it, coated already on the mast cells, so, anti, uh, so this allergen, it directly binds to the antibodies against it, and uh, it will lead to uh, increased release of the leukotrienes which are stored inside the mast cells okay they are preformed now uh, during the second exposure these increased leukotriene release will ultimately these leukotrienes will bind to leukotriene receptors leukotriene receptors are present in the bronchioles okay binding of leukotriene to the leukotriene receptors will lead to bronchospasm you can say this diagrammatic representation of bronchospasm yes Okay, bronchospasm will lead to bronchoconstriction and ultimately lead to the precipitation of attack. Okay, so this was the pathophysiology of uh, bronchial asthma. Now we are going to see step by step which are the drugs acting against all one of these processes. First of all, we'll see where uh, which drugs we can give. Uh, no, first of all, we'll see where the drugs can act in the whole etiopathology. Okay, step by step. First is we can uh, block this interleukin five okay release or synthesis and then we can after it's inside this release then we can also block the interleukin 5 receptor we can block the synthesis or release of interleukin 4 and 13 then we can block this FCE receptor 1 okay so uh, after that which drug we can give we can give uh, steroids okay they block the acetylation of histone protein H3 Histone protein H3 also the which ultimately subsequently lead, leads to release phospholipase A2. Okay, uh, reduce phospholipase A2. Then uh, we can give drug which uh, reduce this lipoxygenase. Okay, after that uh, for uh, stopping the increased leukotriene release. Okay, for suppose leukotriene are synthesized, we can still we have got hopes we can stop the release during the re-exposure with the same allergen. So we can give mast cell stabilizer for that. We'll see. We'll see the drugs which are used. Then we, if the leukotrienes are synthesized, they are released. Still, we have got hopes. We can block the leukotriene receptor. Okay, leukotriene receptor they are present in the bronchioles. Leukotriene receptor will be blocked, so leukotrienes will not be able to act on it. Suppose leukotriene receptor is also being bound by the leukotrienes, which will ultimately lead to bronchoconstriction. We still have got hopes. We can uh, oppose this bronchoconstriction with the help of drugs known as bronchodilators, okay? So I have noticed that the drugs which are used in emergency cases or uh, uh, severe cases, first of all, the aim there is to reduce the symptoms and uh, which are very fatal. Uh, so uh, the drugs used for emergency conditions, they come to the latter part of the etiopathogenesis or pathophysiology. Uh, so I have uh, so uh, I have seen that uh, so there's not a thumb rule or something like that but it's my just uh, just an uh, observation okay now we'll see the drugs use uh, first of all the initial steps we have got uh, monoclonal antibodies so there is one thing that monoclonal antibodies which have got ZU or XU or XI in their name they are uh, usually the animal uh, derived that is they are grown on animal cell lines okay and uh, the monoclonal antibodies which do not have the ZU, XU or XI in its spelling, they are uh, human derived, okay? Uh, so, uh, we'll start the drugs for bronchial asthma. First one, we can block this interleukin-5. The drug used for it is mepolizumab and reslizumab. Mepolizumab and reslizumab, okay? Uh, then next which we can uh, what we can do is we can block this interleukin 5 receptor interleukin 5 receptor can be blocked by a drug the monoclonal antibody is known as benralizumab benralizumab 
B stands for basophil, E stands for eosinophil. Basophil and eosinophil, they are recruited by interleukin 5 receptor, so it is very easy to remember benzralizumab, okay? Then, interleukin 4 and 13, we can block with the help of dupilumab. This hasn't got XU, ZU or XI in its name. It is human derived, okay? So there are less chances of hypersensitivity reaction occurring in this, okay? Then, now we have got the blockers for this FC region, FC receptors for uh, the IgE antibodies here we can uh, block. So the monoclonal antibody used here is omalizumab. Okay, omalizumab. So these were the monoclonal antibodies used in bronchiolasthema. Many times they ask in vivas or practical uh, that uh, and list the drugs and list the monoclonal antibodies used in the uh, bronchiolasthema patient. So these are the ones summed up together. Then the next class of drugs we use, they are the drug of choice for the maintenance treatment of bronchial asthma. They are the steroids. Here, steroids. What do they do is they reduce the acetylation of histone protein H3 and subsequently reduce the phospholipase A2 and uh, they are the drug of choice, okay? Uh, except for one condition uh, in bronchial asthma which is the status asthmaticus in which bronchodilators we use a uh, short acting beta uh, agonist they are basically drug of choice for status asthmaticus okay so next uh, class of drug which we use uh, next the drug not a class is a ziluton ziluton is a drug which reduces the uh, lipoxygenase formation okay which will prevent the leukotriene synthesis then next drug class of drug which we use are the mast cell stabilizers mast cell stabilizers they stabilize the mast cell membrane and do not let the leukotrienes get released on uh, re-exposure with the same allergen so mast cell stabilizer uh, is a group of drug which has got uh, sodium chromoglycate uh, then uh, ketotifen okay there are many drugs uh, I just remember these two right now. Ketodifen is basically a NSAID non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It is not usually used in uh, bronchial asthma. We, uh, the, they use it for allergic conjunctivitis. Okay. Uh, then uh, next class of drug we have got is the leukotriene receptor blockers. Even after the leukotrienes are released, we can block them. We have still got hopes. So leukotriene receptor blockers we can give. Uh, the drugs included are Montelukast or Zafilukast. Here there comes one point for MCQs. The side effect of these leukotriene receptor blockers, example Montelukast, it is a vasculitis, very famous one known as Chugstrauss vasculitis. So MCQs they ask many times, so just a point to note, uh, Chugstrauss syndrome. Okay, and then the ultimate one. We, the drugs which we use for inhibiting the bronchoconstrictions are the bronchodilators okay so bronchodilators basically I'll tell you uh, what happens in this case uh, the bronchial smooth muscles they have got uh, uh, many receptors uh, some of which are beta 2 receptors and M3 receptors okay so beta 2 receptors they uh, ultimately convert they on upon activation they convert ATP into cyclic AMP and cyclic AMP will lead to relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles okay uh, so and ultimately cyclic AMP is metabolized by one enzyme known as phosphodiesterase now the drugs which we give for bronchodilation sympathetic system is responsible for bronchodilation while parasympathetic system is responsible for bronchoconstriction so we gonna give beta 2 agonist selective beta 2 agonist they are the drug of choice for status asthmaticus so uh, beta 2 agonist have got uh, two classes short acting one and the long acting ones uh, salbutamol salmeterol then formeterol okay uh, then uh, we can give uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors also for example theophylline so phosphodiesterase on inhibiting uh, phosphodiesterase how that drug is gonna be helpful in bronchial asthma yes it will reduce the metabolism of cyclic AMP so there will be increased amount of cyclic AMP in the bronchial smooth muscles which will lead to bronchial dilation okay so uh, these were the short and long acting beta 2 agonist and the uh, phosphorylase inhibitors now uh, there are another set of receptors muscarinic receptors m3 receptors major they are present in the bronchial smooth muscles so they are responsible for bronchoconstriction uh, via the IP3DAG pathway and opening the calcium channels okay 
so we gonna give uh, antagonist to these receptors so they here also we have got two classes short acting and long acting uh, which has got drugs like ipratropium bromide and tiotropium bromide uh, respectively uh, so uh, then uh, we have got uh, uh, okay these are the drugs used uh, uh, there are calcium channels okay so there is one uh, dramatic reversal causing drug uh, that is magnesium sulfate so uh, it is said that our body cannot differentiate between mg plus 2 and ca plus 2 so uh, we give mgso4 which wins the competition uh, mg plus 2 basically wins the competition and enters the smooth muscles instead of the calcium which will lead to inhibition of the contraction or uh, prevention of the contraction so uh, it is used in as a last resort in the uh, refractory cases of the status systematicus and uh, not used in every case it is used under special conditions only uh, so as you study go deep into it you will know which are the special conditions uh, so these are the drugs basically used for bronchial asthma and correlated with uh, the pathophysiology and uh, thank you so much for uh, so much love and support once again hope you like this video and remember the warning you are not supposed to go and buy these drugs this video is just for educational purposes if you are a medical student then consider subscribing new videos will be coming soon thank you so much